Hello everyone and welcome back to this daily slash weekly race guide. This is week 24 I think, although we've not done 24 of these this year as we started a little bit late. Some interesting races today, a couple which will hit your SR and DR and one that is actually fairly enjoyable. I actually quite liked it to be fair, I think you could get some good clean racing out of it. So which one is which? Well you're about to find out but first of all let's jump to race A and I'll talk to you in a little bit more detail. We're in Spain then for race A and of course that means Catalonia. Now this is an interesting race and this is the one that I actually quite enjoyed to be honest with you. So it's three laps in length. It's a grid start. You will need traction control at the start here and we are using sports hard tyres. Of course no fuel usage and no tyre wear. What car are we using? Of course this car is provided for us by Gran Turismo. It's actually the Renault Clio V6 and I've got to say I, uh, it's an interesting car. It's got a little bit of oversteer in there. It seems very controllable. Uh, and if you can really get into the swing of the car, you could do very well here and have some very clean races. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump towards the race and I'll give you a few more tips and tricks. So as I said in the intro there, make sure you have traction control on one here. You see I love it on one. Look at the guy to my right here. Doesn't lose that instantly. Now I hit the limiter here, so just make sure you don't do that. Maybe concentrate on the gear change first before knocking traction control off. Now we're going to head towards turn one here. You can see we're gaining that advantage just on the Spaniard to my right hand side. Uh, and we're going to look towards the inside. Remember as I always say, try and stay on the inside here. It's better, it's safer. However, this is a fairly clean race in the grand scheme of it. So we go down the inside here, we stop the car, we slow it down. Uh, the Spaniard slightly tapped the Frenchman into me. No harm, no foul there. Everybody makes a corner. Happy days. And we carry on racing. So I'd say fairly clean here. Now one thing I didn't expect here was the Spanish driver to break there. It breaks quite a lot for this corner. One thing I would recommend, do not break on this corner. I have never, ever, ever in the history of Gran Turismo ever break on that corner. I roll the car through it and that's the best way to do it. It doesn't unsettle the car then. Coming to this right hander, he's going to lose the rear again there. So you can see how the rear does come out on this Clio. Just got to be careful of that. I'm using brake balance minus one here towards the front. I would recommend doing that. Zero is fine, but you just have to control the overstairs. You can see we're having some good clean racing here. Everybody is staying on circuit here. There's some side-by-side -side action. Now, I always show you the good of my driving, but I also show you the bad where appropriate. And here is something bad. It looks a lot worse than I felt it was at the time. So apologies to the Spaniard. The Spaniard gets it all wrong here. He drops to second gear here. I'm in third gear. So he just changes gear there, and I absolutely slam him one. Um, so uh, huge apologies to the Spaniard there and that is one thing you've got to watch out for here is the changing of gears So one of the weaknesses with this car is the change of gear you can see it there It changed gear you then lose a bit of acceleration for a bit and then you start accelerating again So there is a delay with the, the gear change so I hit the Spaniard there which obviously sent him left I didn't realize how bad it was until I watched this so again apologies for that I show you the good I show you the bad just be careful of doing that. And I'm going to show you the same situation again here. Do this corner in third gear. Do not drop to second. You're going uphill as well, remember? So it amplifies it. Two drivers run wide here. I'm staying in third gear. They both are in second gear. You notice the instant drop off there by Maestro. Instant drop off there because he changed gear going uphill. It's a huge knock on effect there. So I go around the outside and get that position. Be careful of changing gear. Try and stay in as high a gear as possible. That way you can maintain a decent pace around the lap. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to talk you through a lap here. Uh, just a little lap guide, I guess. Uh, I don't do these very often, but I think it's critical we get this right in terms of gears. Because if you get it right, you should be able to maintain a very good pace. So coming down here, there's a uh, flag marker on the left that you can use. All the cones, of course. I'm in third gear here. Some people will drop to second. Do not do that. Stay in third. Stay in third through the corner gun. As I say, don't break for this corner. Just roll through it. Look at that. I'm just bouncing the throttle a little bit there. A little bit of a lift. Carry on. Accelerate through the corner. Remember, I'm a minus one brake balance. Normal braking point for this next corner is about where the bridge is. You're going to brake. And it's going to be third gear again. Third gear and we turn in. Again, you're just bouncing the car a little bit there. Maintaining that throttle around the corner and now we're going to actually drop to second gear for this corner i'm still not decided yet what to do here i was a bit unsure changing up uh, gears there as well but i dropped a second here it's a bit tighter but we've got a downhill run now if it's downhill and we've got this delay in the shift it's not too bad it's when you go uphill it's kind of critical 
Again, this is a third gear corner. You brake just as the curb starts there. You roll it through the corner and then you accelerate as best as you can. Notice it stays stable. Third gear, we have no drop off in acceleration because of that gear change. We survive as we come up to this right hander. Don't brake for this either. Just roll through the corner, accelerate where you feel necessary, up into fourth gear now onto this back straight as we head towards this left hander on the right side it's around the 100 uh, meter there just before it we're going to break there's a flag marker there as well that i use this is second gear of course very slow corner at catalonia we accelerate through there so the car get a little bit twitchy as we then head up to this right hander this is where it gets a little bit tricky because we're going to be in between gears here so it's very very easy to drop down to second i keep it in third again i don't want that shift uh, or the slow acceleration once I change gears as we then come into the right hander. As you get better at this, of course, you maintain a little bit more speed. So I dropped a second here. I think this is a third gear chicane after watching this afterwards because I'm instantly going to hit the limiter here and then lose that acceleration. So maybe try third gear, but that is going to be a lap at Catalonia. I hope those little tips and tricks help you out there. And uh, yeah, let's jump back to the main menu and uh, we'll look at what's next. For the next one then, we are heading once again to Japan, to Autopolis, and we're going to be in some Group 3 machinery. So here we are in Japan, and this is one of the hardest tracks to overtake on, because generally speaking, you either need to dive bomb or have a hell of a run on a given corner. Very difficult with the amount of corners on this circuit. Now, in terms of the race details, we have four laps here at Autopolis, and it is a rolling start. Remember, with Autopolis and a rolling start, if you start on the corner, just whack that traction control to one. It just makes sure you have a safe start there. We are racing on racing car tyres, of course. We are in Group 3 machinery. And once again, for race B, we have no fuel or no tyre wear. So in terms of the cars, oh, as of filming this video, of course, there are three cars, oh, the highest three cars on the leaderboard, should I say. We have the Audi R8, of course, it's handling circuit. So the Audi R8 being up there was very much expected. And when I looked at the leaderboard, I was like, yep, that is, uh, you know, to be expected. Uh, the Subaru WRX is also up there. Now, that is also the same as the Audi R8, essentially. Whenever the Audi's up there, the Subaru is also up there. But that's an FR alternative towards um, this race. Now, finally, the third car on the leaderboard, I can't believe I'm saying this, a Pug Power is back. It's the Peugeot RCZ. Now, I'd say this is at the time of filming, and that very well could change. So, without further ado, let's jump to the race, and I'll show you a few tips or tricks that you can use here to potentially try and gain some positions, or maybe a slight change in car choice. So here we are, then I'm going to show you the grid. So obviously Group 3, you can normally bring what you like, and you see a wide variety of cars there. The interesting one here is the Aston Martin in P11. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now you can see I'm messing about with charge control there. I'm just speeding this up a little bit. Uh, brake balance, if I'm in an MR car around this circuit, minus 3 is probably the best place to be. In terms of charge control, though, you can see I just needed it a little bit, and then it was fine. So potentially you don't need it on. I just put it on for safekeeping. It's very worthwhile putting it on just for that little bit of safety to get you going. It would be horrible to spin on the last corner and not have any rate at all during this. So you're going to obviously sprint down towards turn one. And generally speaking, people will run deep here. Now, because it's race B, no tyre temperatures involved here. So everybody should be fine. That's also why I probably didn't need traction control as much on that last corner when we started the race. I say brake balance minus three. The reason for that, we have a lot of undulations at this circuit, especially in that last sector. So it's better to have stability in the car with minus three. Now, I will talk about overtaking places in just a second. As you can see, there's lots of uh, overtaking moves going on there. The Aston goes on the inside of RSK there. We had somebody who'd span out as well. Obviously, that corner is a prime overtaking spot, but it does require a dive to get it right and nailed. And dive can normally mean in contact. Uh, sometimes it doesn't if you're aware of what's going on, but usually it does mean contact. So I'm going to head up here. Now, I've always said avoid going around the outside. I'll show you the reason why later on. Uh, because normally you'll get pushed out. But you have some classic clean racing here with RSK. Fair play, my friend. Good racing there. Uh, brilliant stuff. And uh, it's nice to see, isn't it? Nice to join a daily race and have just some clean racing. Uh, as we come into this right-hander now. Uh, and then we're going to go into the next right-hander. What we're going to do, advance a little bit further on now. And I'll talk about some of the overtaking spots here. So obviously this corner coming up. This hairpin here. I mentioned it just before. Very much an overtaking spot. People will run deep like the Aston Martin driver does here. You go on the inside. Otherwise, some people will try and dive down the inside there. Potential of contact is very high. Just be careful of that. Be wary of it on your radar as well. The Aston Martin gets a good bit of acceleration here. Now, this Aston Martin, 
is rapid. And I'll talk about it again in just a second. We've got another overtaking move potentially coming up here. So I had nowhere to go. So that's why I'm lifting off here. And I'll just back off early. I sort of gathered what was going to happen here. This is why I always say don't go on the outside. Because that sort of can happen there. Just get a slight nudge. Uh, and you can lose a spot there. See, as you can see with this Aston Martin. Very quick in acceleration. And this is what I was on about maybe a change of car choice. So if you're in the midfield and you're in an MR car, there's no real place to overtake without a dive. I've, I've said this a number of times already. But the Aston Martin had enough power there to actually accelerate away from me every single time. And when we get on the start finish rate in a second, you'll see that again. So he essentially could make moves here, whereas I couldn't. I tried everything to get past this Aston Martin, and I really, really couldn't. I tried my very hardest. I tried the overtaking spots that I normally take, and it just drove a clean race. So in the end, you know, perfect driving lines, clean race. So I couldn't get past. It's a very tight circuit, lots of corners. And as you see here now, I'm in the slipstream. I had a better run initially. I just can't keep up with that Aston Martin as it breaks away there in that slipstream. So very difficult if you're in an MR car and stuck behind a power car. Now, if you are in the power car and you have that situation, be careful of dive bombs because everyone will start getting more aggressive. Now, I did go for a bit of a dive bomb on that lap, lap three. Um, it was fine, um, but I thought there was a bit, a bit too much contact, so I just lifted and let the Aston go again, although he would have overtaken me anyway. As you see, this is lap four. We were still side by side, having some fantastic racing. I try and go for the outside move here, the one that I really don't recommend. Uh, you see an accident that's happened there. It's going to happen if you're going to go for moves here. So I'll just get run out of the road a little bit there. Uh, and there's a little bit of contact there with um, the British driver. But even so, I've shown you some places there to overtake. Just be careful. If you go for an overtake here, more than likely there will be contact. Just be very careful. Other than that, enjoy the racing. Group 3 is always good fun to race anyway. Uh, let's jump back to the main menu. Race C then is going to be known as Carnage, Chaos, DR Killer or SR Killer or a combination of any one of those. Let's jump to it and I'll talk you through it a little bit more. Welcome to Monza then and that is half the reason why this is such Carnage, Chaos and such a killer on your DR or SR. Even worse is that it's the No Chicane. Oh, is it worse? I'm not too sure actually. We are racing Monza No Chicane. And we are in a one-make race. We will talk about the car in a little bit. Let's talk about the race details first. I nearly jumped the gun there. So in terms of race details, we have 11 laps. What makes it even worse in terms of carnage is it's a grid star with a penalty check as well. So you need to make sure you get that right. And you can literally put your foot to the floor in this car. It is on racing hard tyres. Fuel usage is times two and tyre wear is times 16. Although, to be honest, it might as well say times zero because you don't need to worry about either of those throughout the race. Now, in terms of the car, we are using the Red Bull Junior Group X car. So this car is obviously not that quick in terms of the Red Bull cars, but it does mean you don't have to brake very much and slipstream is a major factor because there's a lot of downforce there. So you can see how this is all building up. Monza no chicane, slipstream, grid start. You see where I'm going with this. Let's jump to the race now and I'll give you a few tips or tricks. And hopefully you can survive some of these races. There we are at the start. Make sure you're absolutely slamming that accelerator. Burn off as much fuel as you can as we get ready to start. No traction control needed, as you saw there. As uh, we get ready to set off, as you see, Antimix there. Uh, just get a jump start. I'm not sure if we did that on purpose or not. Uh, first of all, uh, we're going to have an actual party here with Diglett. I'm not sure whether Diglett thinks he's underground or not, and there's a new Pokemon, but uh, yeah, let's check out that old radar there. Yeah, uh, that is solid to race against, and I'll be honest, I was scared the entire time he was anywhere near me, because I'm surprised the game doesn't kick somebody out when they're just all over the place. I mean, look at that! How can you race against that? Anyway, coming up to turn one. This is where, obviously, carnage is going to happen here. You see there's a uh, concertina effect there. Everybody just hits into each other. A couple of people run off there. Someone gets reset as well. Lots of penalties being handed out here. Some people run wide. You can't do three wide through that chicane. So you just have to be as careful as you possibly can there as uh, we then come towards this right hand. Again, just got to be careful here. People running people wide. Slight touches forces other people wide. Try and be on the inside of any of these corners as best as you can as we then come to this right-hander. Um, just like hit Diglett there. I've no idea in a month of Sundays where that guy is actually on track. So I'm just guessing at this point as uh, the French guy then takes a penalty if lots of people taking penalties there. So you can see why it's quite carnage and chaos and just everything all mixed up there uh, as uh, Antimix then gets plebbed out again uh, as we head towards this left-hander. Spanish driver goes around the outside. It's lucky that I saw him there because I think a lot of people would have just taken them out there. 
Uh, outside moves at Ascari, never good at all, so just be careful of those. As we head down towards the Parabolica, this is where I was really concerned. You can see how much Diglett is going up and down like, oh, it's an absolute party in that car. Um, so obviously I'm going to try and break early here. As you see, I do there. Slight tap there, nothing much I could do, but then look behind on the radar, absolute smashing going on behind. And that's just, you know, being hit constantly from behind that backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. Unfortunately, the Spanish guy, uh, driver there came off worse off. Um, not much I could do there, I'm afraid. Um, it, that is what it is. That's why they need to something needs to happen here now let's jump towards some tips and tricks here now in terms of this race it's best to race smart here so you're going to see antimix now catch up to me with the slipstream at this point in the in the race in this scenario let the slipstream guy go play a bit of tic-tac-toe as what my uh, parents or grandparents would say you know when they used to do it with lorry drivers literally let them go sitting behind and then on the next straight you go they sit behind you and then you can build up some pace to catch up to the lead pack. So you can see that here. One thing to be careful of there is the sausage curve. You can see how that lifted me up. Now that corner is actually a second gear corner, not a third gear corner. But I'll get back to that shortly. I'm going to do a quick rundown at the end of this video in terms of a quick lap guide. So we're going to come through here now. I'm showing you this little bit because Antimix is about to get plebbed again like he did a few weeks ago in the last um, ra daily race guide. And there he goes, Antimix, into the barrier there. Uh, so that's twice Antimix has been uh, plebbed. And I think Lars has been plebbed once. Maybe we should make a compilation of all these. I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> we continue on now. Uh, and I'm going to show you a mistake for myself. So one thing you have to be careful of here is I've had the slipstream now the entire length of this straight. I'm going to have it all the way to the corner here. And one thing I misjudged here was my breaking point because obviously I'm carrying such an increase of speed here. It's uh, about five miles an hour faster there as we go through the corner. Still catching, still catching five miles an hour. We head to here now and the German driver does an amazing smart move here. Brakes early, obviously sees it coming. I'm trying to stop the car, don't quite do it. Fortunately, I don't get a penalty. I run a little bit wide there. German driver clean through there. I mean, shout out to you. That was perfect racing there. Uh, good smart racing saw it coming backed out but if i was in that german driver situation i would have probably done something similar and broke a little bit early and let that car go through again racing smart here is probably more critical than trying to get every position known to man every single lap it doesn't quite work like that but going to this track guide now lap guide should i say quick one as we head towards the chicane uh, you're gonna break norm where you normally break not where the cones break where the tarmac is you're gonna break there drop down to second gear Turn in, you can cut a bit of that, avoid the sausage curb there, accelerate through, up to third gear. You see my brake balance there? Minus three for those interested. Do not brake for this, just a slight lift here. You can see that and turn in, the downforce should keep you going. You don't need to brake for that corner. You do need to brake for this and it's better to be in third here for this corner. So we go through there, we get a little bit of oversteer. If you're in fourth, uh, what I found was that there was not enough weight over the rear wheels and it would oversteer more. Third gear, it felt like the weight was really pushed down in the car. So it meant I could go through the corner slightly cleaner. It wasn't the best corner there, but just to explain that. So we head towards the Scari now. You're going to break in the normal situation again. Actually, you know, a bit later. Sorry, about 80 meters. Uh, I'm in fourth gear here. Uh, fourth, third gear. It'd be close. I stay fourth for this one uh, as we accelerate through a Scari now and we head towards Parabolica. What you will find is a good technique to use here is overlaying. So where you brake and you slightly dab the throttle, that'll stop any oversteer happening in the braking zones. Or you can move the brake balance even more forward than it currently is. You can see tyre wear, no issue. Fuel, no issue. So come around Parabolica now. Happy days, nice and easy. Bit of overlaying, kept, kept the car stable. We head towards the line. Congratulations to Will on that win there. I am going to show you that a lot of people got penalties in this race. In fact, nearly everybody got penalties. As you're about to see there... Penalties galore, so you know, avoid penalties, you should be good. And you see how much red A's and S are there. But that's going to be it for me now, folks. You can see the impact that race has and why I'm calling it chaos and a bit of carnage. Although I did actually enjoy the racing, I'll be honest. I was laughing my head off on that first lap. I really was, especially with Diglett going up and down like an absolute yo-yo. That's going to be it for me, folks. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video or live stream.